Hi, my Pisces friends, family, and soul tribe. I'm Debbie Dubois. Welcome to my channel, True Sacred Union. It is time for your July reading. So we're going to go ahead and get started by shuffling the cards. I've got to say, these uh, monthly readings have been incredible. Um, you may want to check out some of the other readings for your Ascendant, for your moon sign, for that of your twin flame or your soulmate or, you know, gosh, your mom or your dad, whatever it is. Uh, incredible energies for July, which is very encouraging because June was really, really, I want to say it was really tough. And I'd say it was tough because, gosh, I'm not even sure why it was tough, but there was a lot of restriction in Ju uh, June. I, I, I might have said July. In June, there was a lot of um, obstacles and I know a lot of people were really wrestling and struggling and a lot of people were super tired so um, you know let's hope that July is just a little bit different than that um, it really looks like it is for all of these readings that I've done today so I'm gonna shuffle a few more times and while I do I want to make you aware of the Twin Flame and Ascension workshop that's taking place in Niagara Falls that's September 27th 28th and 29th it's being held by Marla Kelly of Twin Astrology and uh, I've been invited as a facilitator I'm going to be joined by uh, my sister Kalina Malnar who I had a radio show with at one time and was quite instrumental in some of my breakthroughs on the twin flame path and connection um, and then Rob and Angie who facilitated the twin flame workshop in Bam, they're going to be there as well so it's promising to be a great time we've got some people coming back from other workshops and we've got some new people there's still tickets available they came out pretty recently but if you are interested you might want to check it out so um get your tickets if it's something you want so finishing up the shuffling here i think we've taken care of any housekeeping and we are going straight to the overall energies for pisces July. All right, let's look at the overall energies for Pisces. Okay, we've got Jupiter. We have birds. The birds have been coming up a lot. We have Mars. We have Mars and Jupiter. Oh my, with birds in the middle. All right, I'm going to pull these cards aside and spread them out over here. Let's just get a little bit of space so that we can take a look at these cards and figure out. Let's see what this information is saying. All right. So this is definitely a month where you guys are going to be um, opening lines of communication, really, really, um, you know, making contact with people. It's, you've got the ruler of expansion, Jupiter on one side, but then you have the ruler of destruction. We've got Jupiter and Mars on either side. We've got the tower energy and we've got the wheel of fortune energy. Wow, is there a lot of energy here, okay? So Pisces is going to be doing some, I want to say negotiation, some movements, some deals. Uh, there's a lot of really uh, incredible energies we're expanding we're also dealing with raw very oh in, in, in instinctive energies very it's like base energies we got base energies but we're in the process of expansion and I don't know if the birds um, are, are pretty much saying in order to go through this you're going to go through a period of time where there's a lot of communication that you're doing either with the people in your life or um, I mean like I'm not sure if this is with family or friends or if this is with business associates or I guess it's really gonna depend upon your particular situation but Jupiter it offers us the ability to expand and grow all right it, it, Jupiter brings in a lot of fortune. Um, it creates a lot of optimistic opportunities. You feel, I want to say, a passion and an intensity of growth, of, of opening up, of movement. Um, and then that's very raw energy at the other end. It's like, it can be, depending upon your situation, you might be dealing with situations that are at your base level of... Um, 
like emotional, raw energy, raw emotions, raw instinctive survival energy. So in a sense, it's almost like, I want to say it's like almost polar opposite in that it's a swinging pendulum between expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting. It's almost like you're trying to create something here. And there's something going on with communications. I mean, we're going to pull some more cards on this and um, not just on this, but let's see where this reading goes because what I have found is, is that um, almost all of these cards tie together. At the, at the end, they all kind of tell a story, tell a picture of where we're at. Um, we're going to look at your love life right now. We're going to look and see what information is coming up. So we got a snowflake. We got a letter. We got more communications. Do you know how many? We must have some kind of communications energies going on, which is really strange because on the 7th, we're about ready to go into Mercury retrograde. So not really sure how that all meshes up. And the crow. Okay, so this may take a little bit of finesse for me to figure this out. All right, hang on a second. All right, so we're looking at our love life. Gosh, I mean, I don't know if... It's interesting because written communications and the crow being the memory keeper, um, knowing stuff, having information, having records, having news. There's something, there's something along that for, for you in this reading with, um, with sacred partners or with relationships. It's almost like, it, I want to say this mysteriousness of the crow is it's kind of like, you may even receive some kind of communication from the person in uh, maybe a more formal way. And it kind of maybe drives you a little crazy because you're not really sure what that energy is saying to you. Whether, you know, it's kind of like, you feel like you wish you had the inside scoop on what they're talking about. But if you tune into the detail and you dive into um, this delicate situation of communication, you're probably going to find out that there is some intelligence to this. Like a snowflake is, intelligent design is a great way to describe the snowflake. It's like, how is it possible for there to be such perfection and such beauty in the detail of something like a snowflake? Um, this communication that you may be receiving, this is a general reading, some of you may, some of you may not, um, it's going to be a little bit of paying attention to the details to kind of try and figure out the mystery, to put the pieces together. Now, conversely, you may find yourself desiring to write some communication yourself, okay? You may be pulling out some of your playful energy. Uh, to write some communication to this person. Um, you know, in your, in, your, in your knowing, the memory keeper of the crow, in your knowing, um, you may have some information that you need to relay to this person. Uh, the snowflake calls for you to pay attention to, pay attention to this delicate situation. Be very precise. Uh, make sure that you pay attention to the details in this communication for the highest possible outcome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let's move on to creative expression. Let's find out what is going on with you and creative expression. This is like the seventh or eighth time I have pulled out the head of the pack. And this is what I'm talking about. July's energy seems to be filled with the success energy in creative expression, um, largely in creative expression. The falcon, I just saw this, both of these cards came up in my last reading, having to do with um, messages from the higher self and from creative expression. So we've got that. And the lighthouse comes up again. This is unbelievable. So um, yeah, let's tune into this information. Now, they came up in different orders and different combinations, so of course this gives me a whole brand new way of looking at it, but we're talking about creative expression from a higher purpose standpoint. Your higher self is very much engaged, engaged in your creative expression at this point, 
and that's giving you a specific focus even if you're not able to focus like you would normally focus yes you you do at the higher level have that focus okay um there is a little bit of a warning here um to be careful to use tact and diplomacy i've seen this before uh today we've got we've got we've got a warning that we want to make sure that we're communicating clearly and what we're trying to achieve if you find yourself in some form of an obstacle you know your higher self is going to give you the prompting it's going to give you the the strategy the plan to step aside to step around it to not don't confront any of this obstacle um, head on if you are going to engage with it you're just going to want to make sure that you do that very diplomatically and very carefully um, that is what's going to give you the most successful outcome that you can have in the situation. Whatever it is you're trying to achieve from a creative um, expression standpoint, you definitely are very well aligned for that with the participation of the higher self. You've probably gotten out of your own way and you are tuning in. You're using that skill that you have to sidestep, you know, the ego, get the ego out of the way so that you can tune into the information that's going to give you the highest results. They're going to give you that first place, you know, that win, that, that whatever it is you're trying to complete. Um, there's just a little bit reminder here. Uh, be aware, be aware that you may need to use your diplomacy um, in this situation. Now we're going to take a look at what does your higher self want you to know for the coming week. Um, the first card we are pulling is the lily. So funny, I've seen so many of the same cards. It must be the flavor energy of July. We've got the rings here again. This is an overall what is your oh my gosh and now we've got the twins we have got the twins and the soulmates right next to the ring so it's interesting because all right these particular these particular cards the intuit oracle uh with bonus trio from aria is based on lenormand uh which is reading cards in pairs where they have pretty specific meanings um i definitely am seeing that in the using these cards the cards that surround the cards tell you so much about how this is interpreted and the questions that you've asked and what these cards are saying. It's just, it's magical. I love it. Um, the main ingredient that uh, I, I'm going to come right out and say, this does have to do with partnership and agreement within that actual sacred partnership. Whether you're a twin flame or not, there is that special somebody that's there for you, that's out there for you, that is that person that you are um, really simpatico with, the, the one of a kind. It's the twin flame card. It's also, um, this is the one. This is the one you're supposed to be with. We have that paired with the rings. Now, if the rings were showing up in any other situation, I wouldn't think that it has to be around a relationship, but right here it's kind of indicating to me that source is trying to tell you that there is this partnership for you there is this um commitment this promise this bond that's there for you um that this it is an alliance it is um it is for coming to fruition for you and it's a very established energy which is what the lily says okay it's an established energy it's a longevity it goes the long distance right and it's based on some maturity it's based on um depth of experience it's established connection so your higher self wants you to know that that is there for you. So while you've got other information going on, maybe in your 3D reality, Source wants you to know that at the higher levels, the connection is there for you while you're dealing with um, communications, dealing with mysterious, I'm not really sure what this means, I'm not really sure what he means, I'm not sure what she means, I wanna figure this out, da, da, da. At the higher levels, you have the promise of this twin flame connection, the promise of soulmate. Um, I wanna say twin flame, twin flame, it doesn't matter if it's twin flame, it's sacred partner, it's that 
ah, that person that gets you, that you get. Um, I'm not picking up that it's necessarily the kind of twin soul connection where, you know, you push everybody's buttons until, you know, everybody explodes. Um, this is actually a much more soothing energy. It's a very compatible energy and uh, it's delightful. So that is some of the information. I am going to pull a an Ascended Master card. Uh, I've been doing this. Basically, it's a card that's pulling together the whole reading. It's what the other side, uh, more. I want to say more experienced. Oh, here's your card. It came right up. Choose peace. This card right here is offered uh, Yogananda. Um, and, and the information that comes from the wisdom of the higher self of us that is related to the mastery, the masters, the what we can call the ascended masters. Um, this card is kind of like the main thing that you need to be aware of. And let's look at how it relates to everything else. All right. First of all, in Choose Peace, the first thing, there's two things that come to me. Number one, in this situation, which I do feel is a little tricky, I do feel that this is, uh, this is, it's really important. The whole paying attention to the communications, trying to figure out what the person that you're dealing with means, um, please be at peace with it. Please try not to have the energies like get into a frustrated, uh, frustrated or frustration type of um, place. If you choose peace, you're gonna understand that your higher self is involved in this, um, that you do understand that there's a higher purpose with this and that you aren't left to your own devices, uh, the small self's devices, and that you do have whatever it takes to push through and, and come to some kind of um, successful outcome. Be at peace with that is what I'm getting. Now again, We've got two energies here. We've got expansion and Jupiter, and we've got um, the tower, uh, Mars destruction energy all in one. What is uh, Yogananda saying? Choose peace. So if you find that this Mars energy is flaring up, that you're in that survival, um, feeling the need to be outspoken, feeling the need to be a little bit aggressive in communicating what you need, and that's more of a base you know, chakra kind of level, you know, you're being told from the higher, higher spaces in yourself is if you choose peace, you're going to find that the expansion works better. You're going to find that the communication works better. So we got communication here. We got communication here. So this is actual what I think of as chit chat, talking, interacting, back and forth, back and forth. This I think is a little bit more com uh, formal communications. When you're in that situation, the peace that you feel is going to definitely out, out, it's going to impact your outcomes. So the other thing, and this is probably, this is where the peace comes in the most. And so I'm going to pull this card down here and I want you to look at these cards over here. No matter what's going on in this tug of war with the energies of are you going to be in an expansive or contractive mode this is almost the divine feminine energy of expansion and this is almost like the contracting energy of the masculine energy right let's create something let's do something and this is more like let's be expansive let's grow get those two energies going on here that is like polar opposite energies. And if you're dealing with trying to work on something on a um, relationship basis, this is your promise to your, it's almost like your higher self wants to talk to your, your base self, your ego self, your, I don't like to use the word small self, but your less awake self, the one that fights for survival in the um, Mars energy. You've got this wonderful compadre kind of relationship here, this experience, this uh, maturity, this longevity. This is sitting here waiting for you. Choose peace, and that's what you're going to find. And this is what July is saying for you. So anyways, I want to stop right there. I want to say thank you so much, my Pisces friends, for tuning in to this reading. If you like what you see, please take a moment to like this video, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to welcome you as a member of my True Sacred Union Soul Tribe. Um, 
I'm trying to think of what else. Well, I've got some more videos coming. Each month I do the Zodiac. I, I have a weekly reading that's delivered just about every Sunday, and I've got some more stuff coming. I primarily focus on uh, relationships, stepping into your own personal power, your creative expression, and all Ascension-related topics. If you're interested, press the bell on the subscription so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, namaste.